Hey everybody, Joel here. I have my daughter Sonia with Hi. me today. And we're taking a look at this right behind us. It's a um, Articat Pantera. And there's a problem with the transmission. Last year I started it and um, got it running, but it had been sitting for several years from the guy I bought it from. And the track was pretty stuck. And I should have tried to rotate it by hand first, but I did not do that. So I think I may have broke a linkage in the actual transmission. So we're gonna start tearing into it. Sonia's gonna be along for the ride. Just wanted her to get a feel for what uh, working on a small engine would be like. So um, stay tuned, we'll keep you posted. So here we have the, the shifter linkage. And I can see that the lever goes down into the transmission, um, which is right in here. So I'm going to take a look down below here just to see if there's some linkage that has pulled apart or what is going on. But first of all, I have to remove this battery and then I'll start tearing into that part of it. Okay, I've got the battery box out. The battery is out and the battery box, the wiring harness that's bolted underneath the battery box. I've got that pulled up and out. So it gives me a lot more room to work in here. And it almost looks like there's a sensor here on the linkage uh, for the reverse lever. And it almost looks like that it's not allowing the lever to pull up all the way uh, to go into reverse or maybe gear into forward. So I'm going to start dissecting that down in there, clean that up a bit and see what I can do. There's a, a sensor right here on a bracket. And it just seems like this might be binding up a little bit down here, but I think that's probably too easy of a fix but I guess we'll find out soon. I removed the muffler box. Uh, took that out so I could have more room to work on the chain case cover. And so yeah, this is a chain case transmission. Um, I took the cover off and down here is the gear that I need to get off. This has got the reversing mechanism in it. So I want to, I'll get this cleaned up. I got a little oil spillage. But um, you can see where the, uh, the belly pan or the front clip, this plastic part, uh, rivets onto the frame down below there. Uh, it overlaps in such a way that you can just drain the oil right out underneath uh, through the pan. So it doesn't make too terribly a, a bad mess, but here's what I did find. I took the cover off to the chain case and in the bottom here, I'm hoping you can see them, we're laying these springs. And those springs are a part of the reversing gear apparatus as far as what I'm understanding. So I'm gonna have to clean that out. I don't see a lot of um, shavings and, and junk in here, so that's good news. Hopefully it's just a case where these springs um, got popped out just from the, uh, the reversing mechanism. If, you're, if you've got it engaged, you got the RPMs up, and you're slamming this gear into an out of reverse, um, this is something that's going to happen. So I'm going to pull that off. We'll take a look at the pins that are in there and then we'll go from there. So I'm deep into the chain case now and I can't get this reversing mechanism bolt out. There's a piece of, um, I don't know if it's a spring or what it is, if it's part of a retainer clip, but I can just barely, let me see if I can get the camera down there to take a look and see what's holding me up. The socket won't go on. Okay, I can see that. I've been trying to slide it out of the way with the screwdriver, um, but that gives me a better picture of what I'm up against. But then I noticed the chain over here is sitting crooked and is lodged up against this other bracket in there. Um, that doesn't look good at all. So I just noticed that now. I'm going to pull the tension off, get this chain loosened up and I got to see what's going on it it's not onto the sprocket correctly um, again I'm no mechanic I'm just kind of going as I find out what I'm doing here there's not a lot of video instruction on these types of things so um, bear with me and we'll keep on moving forward so I took this retainer I think it's some type of retainer clip right in let's see if we can get it down in there right in here. I took that loose, took it out. That's what was holding the chain. It was actually 
the chain had ridden up on this sprocket right here and it was still spinning. The, the sprocket would spin, the chain would spin, but it was cutting a groove into that bracket and you can, or that retainer clip, and you can see the groove right in the middle um, down in there, right in the, up against the chain. So I'm going to tighten that back in now that I've got it back on to the sprocket and I still haven't had any luck. I've I kind of let this go so far for a little bit um, and getting this bottom reversing gear out of here. I wanted to get that chain straightened away, but I opened up a can of worms over here. I thought I had to take this cover off to get this uh, uh, tension out of the chain, but it must be some type of automatic tensioner because I sure made a mess of it. I got this, uh, I took that cover off and this spring came flopping out. So I'm not, I'm just not good at retaining these springs back into position, but we'll give it a whirl and uh, see if I can get that put back into, that goes back into here. Let's get a picture. That goes back into here. So I've got to get it wound up around that uh, shaft that's in there and stick it back in there. So I'll tell you what, I've had a heck of a time getting the bolt out of this lower sprocket. Um, there is some type of a bung. I'll see it when I get that bolt out. Um, but I just could not get a purchase at all uh, with a socket um, in this tight, tight space with the belly pan. So what I did is I ended up drilling a hole I just took a hole saw and drilled a hole so I could stick my socket in right through the um, outer part of the belly pan here. And then I was able to get it to get it out of there. There you can see a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I just used a just used a little hole saw. And that seemed to work out good. I was able to tap my half inch drive on there nice and tight. I got a good purchase and we're getting this uh, we're getting this pulled out of here now. So um, we'll take a look once we get this thing on the bench. All right, so we've got the gears uh, taken out and on the bench, and this is quite frankly what I was expecting um, to be. For the one video that I did find um, about these pins and springs and so on, but Sonia, what do you see besides the things that we found in the bottom of the uh, oil pan or the bottom of the case cover when we pulled it out. What other things are you seeing on here that don't quite look right? Um, how these are broken off and dented. Yes, very much broken off. That retaining clip is totally ripped apart here. And the, the metal cover is right there for that. And one of the pins had fallen out. This was sitting down in the bottom of the chain case. And you can just see it's terrible. I'll kind of show you how these pins are supposed to fit in here. Um, you can see the pins, well, I'll flip it over here. There's the pins, and the pins go into the holes right here, and the retaining clip holds the spring, excuse me, and that spring then pushes the pins down when it calls for it to engage in the holes. What do you see over here with these holes in this in this gear? It doesn't look, doesn't look very good. Are you seeing what I'm seeing over here? Yeah, they don't look like actual nice looking circles. They, some of them, that one looks like a pair. <laughs> it does look like a pair, yes. There's quite the damage on here, but there are still several holes. Well, I guess there's a few holes that are fairly round. So we're going to try it. Um, this gear is about $280, whereas the repair parts for the pins and the springs and all of that it run about forty dollars so I think we're gonna go with this gear again just see what type of luck we have with it um, it might risk more damage down the road but I'm not sure we'll take a chance but I think we'll um, we'll get the parts coming that we need to get this fixed up and then we'll go from there and we'll put it back into the chain case all right, so our parts came in today. Sonia's going to get them opened up here on the bench. Uh, the pins, there's three pins, and they came with springs. Um, let's see, we'll show you the part numbers here. So there's the slip pin, and I'll show you the spring part number also when she gets that one opened up. 
Let's see the part number on that bag once you get that out. That's one of the springs right there. And there's three of those. Everything comes packaged individually, of course. And then we're going to go ahead and back these up. So I'm going to take these screws out of here with the Allen wrench. And we'll put everything back together. You can go ahead and open up that retainer clip too oh. on the bottom. So I checked the diameter of that at the shop. And um, it's the same diameter. So there's our new parts. And also got a bottle of chain lube. So we should be good to go. Do you want to go ahead and start backing these out here with the Allen wrench? I did, um, I got the first little bit of a turn because they were on there pretty tight. So go ahead and take those out. <clears throat> Lefty loosey, righty tidy. So you want to go the other way. There you got it. There you got it. Good job. Steady hand. That's a pretty handy long stemmed Allen wrench there by Bondus. I don't, I don't think I got those at Harbor Freight. They're pretty short screws, so they won't take too many turns to get out. They must be threaded farther down in there because the screws are actually pretty long, but it doesn't take much to get them threaded out. go. Give it a nice spin with your fingers. When you were spinning it with your fingers on the shaft, that was a good way to go. It'll because it takes a lot less um, turns than using the handle and then try to keep pressure on that when you're pulling it out so it doesn't tip over and you lose the screw. Nice. Well that one came out all together, huh? Boy, that thing was shattered. Ripped and torn. One more, huh? Need to hold it? Try that. There you go. Now that the uh, torn up retaining clip, spring retainer clip is off, let's go ahead and pull those springs and pins out that are in there and replace them with the new ones. So just take all three of those out and apart. Oh. Pretty slick, huh? So they're machined very tight to fit right in there. And they don't go all the way down through. See how they have that little bit of a ledge on there? Perfect. Good job. Now I'll throw that retainer clip back on there. The opposite of how we took it off. Yep. Now it should go the other way, shouldn't it? So those, the reveal will rest right on the gear. So now, as we tighten this, we're going to want to make sure we get it all the way seated onto the gear itself. So I'm going to set this cam, um, I'll set the camera down, turn the camera off, I guess, and I'll be able to help you by holding it down. So here's a good shot of that pin, how rounded it has gotten from knocking in and knocking out and jostling around on the big, the main gear here. And you can see how nice and square these are. So those screws went all the way through. They're captured down into a nut in the bottom. Um, so then you can see the spring action. In there for engaging and disengaging into this gear here. So we'll get this stuff cleaned up and start getting everything back into an assembly again. Okay so I got that gear back in and it's a little bit tricky getting it while the chain is on there but if you pull this 
part right out here, this engagement gear, um, it does go on a lot easier, gets out of the way. So I got the uh, self-tensioning. This has got an automatic tensioner in it, and I didn't realize this, but I think I mentioned earlier in the video that I took this cover off and the spring came popping right out of there, so I had to rewind that spring to get enough tension to keep the tension on the chain. So I think that's working out pretty good. Um, you can see that I can push it back into the shaft there and it'll keep tension on the chain. I'm sure that when you accelerate, decelerate, whatever, this thing gets pretty pretty tight and loosens up again, I imagine. So um, I'm gonna get the cover on, try to get the cover on anyways, and hopefully get the shifter uh, lever into the right position so it goes forward when I'm in forward and vice versa, but we'll see what it's gonna take to get this back together. So it's time to put some chain case oil in and it is okay to use your wife's silicone collapsible funnel. Check this out, that's pretty slick. Collapses into just flat. But yeah, it's fine to go ahead and use this um, if you ask permission, number one, and if she has a, another one just like it. So that's the only funnel I could find in the house or actually in the shop uh, that would actually work for for this small of a hole for the chain case lube. So anyways, I'm going to get that added in here and then we're going to, we're getting closer. Got to get the battery put in and uh, muffler. I took a few minutes and I painted the muffler parts. They were all rusty. Just took them all out and gave them a, a shot of high temp paint. And from there, we should be ready to to give it a run, but I want to get the lube in here so I can check it, see if it's going to leak out at the bottom before we go too much further. Just to point out, I am filling through the uh, dipstick chute, and there is an oil fill over here, but I'm finding it easier to go in here with the funnel because I can hold the funnel straight up and down rather than try to go at an angle into this hole over here. The hole is about the same size either way, so it doesn't really make much of a difference which one you get the oil into. In my opinion, maybe it does, but in my opinion, I I can't see where it would be a big... Okay, everything is back together again. Hopefully we can, uh, we can get it going. Got the muffler, like I mentioned, painted up, so that looks nice and clean again. Uh, the box, and the battery is back in. So the lever... I thought I had the lever on backwards because the, these knuckles weren't lining up, but I had to readjust one bolt I had put in, put the bolt in the wrong position um, when I was putting the cover on. So now I've got it, it's exactly where it needs to be. The lever will stay out and it pulls up on the, um, there's a little sensor down in there also. So it pulls that sensor up. Must let the system know that it's in reverse or out of reverse or something or other, but anyways. Um, we're gonna give it a whirl. Okay, got the machine started. It's running outside. It's pretty cold and windy out there, but um, I always want to make sure that the reverse engages and disengages with the um, uh, with the shift lever. And then um, I'll probably take it for a little spin, just quick around the yard and see how it goes. <laughs> and forward uh, but it's running nice clean and smooth in reverse um, I did check the track a little bit it doesn't seem like it's too tight um, but I, I guess I'll have to look in to see why that uh, got that bad uh, humming sound screeching sound in forward but um, I'll keep digging into it take a little spin on it just see what happens real quick around the yard and um, we'll check in later okay that was kind of an abrupt ending there um, but as you can see throughout the video, we did get a, a pretty good repair on the machine and Sonya helped out as much as I could have her. The way it was set up and I was working on it, I was sitting on a stool 
so I would kind of work on um, work on everything down in the motor, and then I would have her come in and I would explain things to her of what what was going on and how we were doing things. But working on the bench really worked out well for both of us. But she likes it. I gave her a ride on the on the snowmobile, and it's been so blasted cold up here that I haven't been out on it um, too much. And they've got to get the trails groomed also. But anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Hit the like and subscribe. I um, hope you appreciated the video. And we will see you all on the next one.